Oh yeah! <laughs> that looks so cool. Oh wow. Right, I can't believe we've made it to 5,000 subscribers. This is a crazy milestone. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It really means a lot. And I didn't expect to get to this uh, milestone so quickly. So thank you. And because it's a big, nice round number, uh, we have to do something to celebrate. <laughs> I wish it was money. I think we should do something a little bit more related to FPV. I've always been really interested in those images that you see uh, people take of highways and cities where they do really long exposure and you see all the light trails. And I wanted to try and mimic that, but with a quad. This is a bank of six 2812 LEDs. They're RGB, they're addressable, and they can be powered from five volts. So they're pretty handy for hobby projects. This is 168 uh, 2812 LEDs. Uh, thank you to Anmantec who provided me with the majority of these. I want to put all those on a quad and then fly around and take some long exposure photography with basically this giant flying light bulb. That's kind of the idea. As for the quad, I'm going to use this, which is my really old beaten up Armaten Chameleon Ti. The reason I want to use the Chameleon Ti is because it has a really sort of chunky base plate. So lots of room to put LEDs on, really thick arms. Although I am running single ESCs on this and I don't really think I can be bothered to change the actual electronics inside. I'm gonna to have to find some way of mounting LEDs on top of the ESCs, I think. Uh, yeah, because we've got a lot of LEDs to get on here. And here it is. I didn't get all 168 LEDs on the quad. I only managed to get 96 on there total. So that's 48 on the top, 12 on each arm, and then another 48 on the bottom as well. On the inside, it's powered by two of these Matek LED controllers. And then I've also got another five volt back at the back. So there's plenty of amps to go around to power all of these things. A couple of other things I changed as well. Uh, we removed the HD cam because that's going to be useless in the kind of light we're going to be flying. There's no need for a GoPro. And the FPV camera I've changed out for this Night Eagle 2 Pro, which is a really, really sensitive low light camera that they don't actually make anymore, which uh, is a bit of a shame. It is one of the highest sensitivity low light cameras going. Also, I got these Emacs Pulsar motors and they have uh, three LEDs on the bottom of each. So there's an extra bonus 12 LEDs. All that's left to do now is to go and fly it and see what we can make. Uh, I'm just gonna prove that all these LEDs work and let you see what it looks like before we go out. Safety first. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm sure that's overexposed as hell, but should look good in the dark. I was just talking to my friend about this and he came up with a really good name for it. Uh, we're calling this project the Skylight. So uh, let's go find somewhere dark. This is perfectly not it. <laughs> the grass is short as well, so that's good. So what I'll do is I'll just go stand there, start flying, and then you press this button, but tell me when you're about to press it. Because then it will start the three second thing. You can see now. Whew. Okay, that's fun. It's still raining. Can you see it? But I'm wearing white so I can see myself and I don't crash into myself because although I've got the night vision camera, it is, uh, it's still quite hard to see. Alright, let's go check out the pictures. You haven't seen these yet? Oh yeah! <laughs> that looks so cool! Oh wow! Look how clear the lines are. Mm. That is so wicked. It's very cyberpunk. I know, that's why I love it. 
Holy shit, that's awesome. They actually worked. I was so pleased. Skylight is a success. Oh, what the hell's happening there? It's a new crack. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> yeah, because you're walking. Oh, yeah, look how wobbly it is when you crash. It's like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, I hope you enjoyed coming on that little adventure and doing that project with me. Uh, it's a little bit different, I know, but I thought we should do something different for the. 5,000 celebration. Uh, so I did say that giveaways will be back and they are back. So I'm going to be doing the regular giveaways again. And the first one, I'm going to be giving away this. This is the frame that I used in the easiest build ever video. It is an iFlight frame and it has the T-Motor F7 flight controller and 55 amp ESC. It's a really good stack. I'm going to be giving that away as well. Uh, I'm not giving away the air unit or the motors though because I'm using those in another build but this has only been flown twice so it's pretty much as good as new, it hasn't been crashed. Um, the only thing is I didn't like the foam rubber feet that came with this frame so I'll give away these uh, quad skids as well, the Road to Riot quad skids so you'll have something to keep it off the ground. So all you need is an air unit and some motors and that is a complete build. If you want to enter and win this fabulous prize, all you have to do is leave a comment with a dollar sign in it and the winners will be announced in the next video. So last thing before saying goodbye, I'm just going to read a couple of comments from the previous video. Uh, the last video was me trying to dive that tower. Banel says, those inverted yours are crisp. What up till are you running? Uh, Banel, I run anywhere between 10 and 20 degrees, depending on how my camera falls that day. Basically, I have the Badger set to the lowest it can go on the cage at the front, which is 10 degrees. But then inside the cage, sometimes the FPV camera can tilt up and down a bit. But that does mean that the GoPro is pretty much on a 10 degree tilt. Sometimes I move the cage a bit up to 15. But yeah, generally under 20. So pretty low tilt, which does help with the inverted yours. But it does mean that your power loops and your matty flips and those kind of moves do get a little bit more tricky. SLRP says, what camera did you use? Settings. Uh, I'm going to do a full video on GoPro settings and things because this question gets asked a lot. But in this video, I was using a Hero 6 for the tower dive and it was all exposure locked and everything and using Real Steady Go to stabilize it. And with the Power Loop Palace, I was using a Hero 7 Black with everything on auto and hyper smooth on. So that's kind of the approach that I usually take if I want to do cinematic stuff or if I've got a big building or something where I'm going to be doing smooth stuff. Use the Hero 6 and Real Steady Go. If it's freestyle, just use the Hero 7. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you very much to everyone for watching and subscribing. It really means a lot, and I can't believe we've got to 5,000. So here's to the next 5,000, I guess. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.